here we go with lesson 2.5 part 2 which means if you haven't watched part 1 you might want to stop and go back to the other video first because we're on part 2 and you need to watch part 1 first all right we talked about those properties addition property of equality subtraction property of equality multiplication property of equality division property of equality substitution property of equality distributive property not of equality of multiplication over addition reflexive property of equality, symmetric property of equality, and transitive property of equality. Today, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use them. So, what I have here looks like a big old T thing, kinda of line here, line here, and then I got this one thing we're gonna start working on. This thing right here, I'll zoom out so you can kinda of see the whole thing all at once, and I always get it backwards. All right, there we go, so it looks like a big T, almost like a big cross, okay. This thing is called a two, column proof two column proof now this is not very complicated it's called a two column proof because it is a proof that uses that's right two columns I know very very complicated I will tell you though that these two column proofs do get difficult especially when you get away from the algebra side of them and into the geometry side of them all right but we're going to start with algebra because usually you know how to do the algebra all right, so this side, the left side, won't be difficult. The right side, we're going to start to challenge you a little bit. You have to do some stuff over here you haven't done before in algebra class. All right, but on the left side, you're pretty used to it. Then later on, as we move into the geometry, both sides will start to get a little more difficult. All right, so two columns. What in the world? This column over here is called statements. This one is called your reasons. For every statement you give, you must have a valid reason. Reasons can be properties, postulates, later on, we haven't gotten any yet, but later on, theorems, um, givens. Given means they gave you that information, okay? Other things like that. So this is step one, statement one, and our reason is, well, they gave me that information. So this is a given. Okay, usually givens go at the beginning, not always, but usually. Okay, now, what would I do in algebra class to this? So I've got this parentheses, I got this thing here, so I would probably distribute, right? So negative 44x minus 8 equals 80. That is my second statement. And what tells me that I can do this? Well, we just talked about that in the last video. It's a property. Which property is it? You guys remember? Anyone remember? Yep, come on, talk out loud, whatever distributive property don't put of equality if you put of equality I'm gonna mark it wrong you can put of multiplication over addition if you want to all right now what would you do to solve this algebra problem right here what would you do next hopefully you just said I would add 8 to both sides and that gives me a new equation. These cancel out, and I get negative 44x equals 88. So that's my new statement. What tells me I'm allowed to go from this statement right here down to this statement right here? Well, what did we do? We added 8 to both sides of our equal sign. What tells us we're allowed to add the same thing to both sides of our equal sign? The addition property of equality and if you need to abbreviate every now and then I was gonna run out of room here that's fine I understand what you're saying and that's good okay now how would you solve this algebra problem what would you do hopefully you said I would divide by negative 44 not just 44 negative 44 44 is cancel negatives cancel negative divided by negative is a positive leaves me with x equals a positive divided by a negative is gonna give me a negative answer and 88 divided by 44 is 2. That is my fourth statement. Now, what tells me I'm allowed to go from this statement up here down to this statement down here? Hopefully you realize we divided both sides of the equal sign by the same thing, so that would be the division property of equality. There you go, that is your first proof. It was an algebra proof, but it was a proof. Okay, your very first proof. They do get harder, but hopefully if you understood this, you'll be really good with the algebra proofs as, at, at the beginning at least. And then when you start geometry proofs, they'll get a little more difficult.
All right, let's take a look at another one, another or sorry, another algebra proof. Okay, so copy this down. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do it together, then I'm gonna give you one to try on your own. Okay, so statements, reasons. This is my first statement. Now, what's your first reason? Well, since I gave you that thing, you would just write given. It was given to me. All right, now, what would you do? There's actually a couple things you could do here. All right, and I don't really care which one you do first. Most people usually cancel this x out, or this one. You could subtract 4x, or you could add 3x. I'm gonna go ahead and add 3x. Where else do I need to add 3x? The other side of the equal sign, over there. Do I put it here or here? Well, since it's got an x, like terms are helpful. So here, these cancel. 7x plus 9 equals 2. That's my new statement. Okay, that plus 3x and plus 3x is not a statement. It's just showing my work. This is my new statement. So what would be my reason for that statement? What did I do? I added 3x, so addition property of equality. Okay, what would we do next? And what do you think you would do? Kind of looking at this at home. Probably subtract the nine, right? Cancels, you notice I did it to both sides of the equal sign. Left side of the equal sign, right side of the equal sign. So seven X equals negative seven. That's my new statement. So what's my reason? Well, since I subtracted, Hopefully it makes sense, it would be subtraction property of equality. Now, I'm gonna let you abbreviate stuff, but if you abbreviate subtraction SUB, I'm gonna mark it wrong, because what else starts with SUB that we learned about in that first video? Remember, substitution. And if you put SUB, I don't know if you meant subtraction or substitution, so if you wanna abbreviate, get it out there. I know that's not substitution, because substitution doesn't have an R in it. It does have a T, but it doesn't have an R, so I'm gonna put TR, property, of equality. All right, how would we finish this? What would you do to both sides? You would divide by seven, right? These cancel. X equals negative one. Well, what's my reason? Well, since I divided both sides, I'm going to use the division property of equality. And there we go, that's another proof. We're done with two proofs already. It's moving pretty quick. Okay, let's zoom out just a second. You can see that whole proof at once. You need to copy any of it down, pause, rewind, so you understand why you were doing the things you were doing. All right, third one. You're gonna do this one on your own. Okay, so, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, statements right here. Reasons over here. This is statement number one. So what would be reason number one? It's a given. All right, pause it. After you've copied it down, pause it. Try this one on your own. When you're done, watch the video. See if you did the steps the same way. If you didn't, you probably did it wrong. Okay, so pause, do it, come back when you're done, check it. Okay, you should be done with it by now. If you got stuck, watch what I'm doing. Take good notes, jot down a question so you can ask it in class. All right. Hopefully you got all the way through it and got an answer for X. If not, uh, or if you get the wrong answer, make sure you correct it in your notes. Okay. Don't leave your notes wrong, don't leave them blank. Here we go. I'm gonna multiply here and here because of that parentheses. So the 60 doesn't change. Negative three times eight is negative 24 X. Negative three times negative four is positive 12. What tells me I'm allowed to do that? That thing right there. Remember, that's distributive property. Not of equality. Don't put of equality, just the distributive property. Notice I didn't put of equality here. If you put of equality, I'm gonna mark it wrong. Okay, what would you do next? I got my X here. I could move the X to that side, but there's not an X over there, so I don't need to. So I'm probably just gonna subtract the 12. Both sides of the equal sign, here and here. What new statement does that give me? 48 equals negative 24x. 
Okay, what tells me I'm allowed to do that? Well, since I subtracted, it's going to be the subtraction property of equality. Once again, don't abbreviate with just an SUB. I might get it confused with substitution. If I get it confused with substitution, I just mark it wrong. All right, how would you finish this? What would you do? Divide by negative 24. Negatives cancel because a negative divided by a negative is positive. 24 is cancel. 48 divided by 24 is 2. Positive divided by a negative is negative 2. There's my answer. Now I've got to give that reason though. So what tells me I'm allowed to do this right here? Well, I divided both sides of the equal sign by the same thing. So that's my division property of equality. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out so you can see the whole proof at once. Make sure you have all of that correct. If you don't, fix your notes. We're gonna do one last proof, but this one's gonna be more geometry and not as much with numbers, okay? The idea is the same though. Statements, reasons. Statements, reasons, statements, reasons. Here we go, geometry proof. Okay, copy that little picture down. I'm gonna go ahead and write statements right here and reasons right here. Okay, but get that picture copied. So A, B, C, D, A, B equals C, D is my given and A, C equals B, D is what I'm trying to prove. That's, that means that's the thing I want to end with. All right, so obviously statement number one should be what? Remember it's the given, A, B equals C, D. Given. All right, now this gets a little more complicated. And I'm going the wrong way. There we go. Okay. Now I have AB, but I want AC. AB, but I want AC. What, how do I get to AC from just AB? What do I have to do? How can I get this whole thing? That's something we learned back in a previous chapter, chapter one. Hopefully you remember this. AB plus BC, think about that. What is AB plus BC equal up there in that picture? AB plus BC equals AC. What tells me I'm allowed to do that? Look at that picture, AB plus BC equals AC. They're all in a nice straight line. They don't, there's no gap between AB and BC. I always get that backwards. All right, remember this? I'm adding a little segment to another segment to get a really big segment. It's called the segment addition postulate. Okay, once again, you can abbreviate a little bit. Can we do that to the other side? Pardon my phone. Let me get that. All right, segment addition postulate. Okay, let's do that to the other side. BC plus C, D equals B, D. And the reason is the exact same, segment addition postulate. Okay, four. Now, I gotta think through this a little bit. All right. Notice these are the same. That's gonna be important here in a little bit. All right, um, now. Look at this here. That's equal. That's that's interesting. Okay, let's take this right here, this AB, and this AB. And I'm gonna substitute. Remember our substitution. If things are equal, we can put something in for it at any time. So I'm gonna substitute. So CD plus BC equals AC. So that's called the substitution. Remember, don't use SUB. Substitution property of equality. Okay, so what I did is I took this line right here and right here, this part's the same, but I put CD into AB's place and I left this part alone. Okay, now look at this. These look very, very similar too, don't they? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of write this out on another sheet of paper so you can kind of see how this works. So I have BC plus CD equals BD and I have CD Sorry, that's from the previous lesson. Let me slide that up a little bit. All right, and I have CD plus BC equals AC. That's what we had on that other sheet. Okay, now, does the order of addition really matter? 
If I add 2 plus 5 or 5 plus 2, I get the same thing, right? Okay, so the order of addition doesn't matter. All right, so I can rewrite this one right here as BC plus CD equals AC. Now look, these are the same. This whole section is the same as that whole section. So I'm going to skip it. This equals this. It's the same, so I'm going to skip it. So I'm going to go from here all the way around over to there. Skipping past this thing that's in the boxes. This, I just rearranged the order. Order of addition doesn't matter. So I'm going to skip all the way past that. Remember, what, what's the idea of skipping something? Skipping something is called the transitive property. So, zoom back out. I'm going to use the transitive property. This and this, they're the same. Order addition doesn't matter. I'm going to skip them. So BD equals AC. See that? Go from here, skip right past all that to there. Transitive property of equality. Hey, that's what we were trying to prove. AC equals BD. Does the order matter? No. If you really want to get it in the same order, that's fine. We can do one more step. AC equals BD. Remember, that was a property we don't use very often where you flip it. Symmetric property of equality. Now, this is tougher, and I realize that, and this is more complicated, but this is what we're going to end up doing with these two column proofs, is this type of stuff. You've got to understand how to do this, okay? It will be tough early on, I realize that. It will get easier the more practice you do. If you don't practice it, it's not going to get much easier. You've got to do it on your own, not copy it off a friend or, you know, look in the back of the book all the time or whatever, or ask me a question every single time you have to do one. The more you do them on, the own, on your own, the better you're going to get. So this is the application of 2.5. Okay, so make sure you've watched both videos for 2.5. All right, we'll see you guys in class.